Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Carol Routledge. She's joining us here from Small Pharma to talk about the company's clinical trials with DMT. It's a naturally occurring psychedelic tryptamine found in plants and the brains of mammals. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Dr. Routledge, thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, give us a little bit of insight into your area of expertise and talk about your role briefly at Small Pharma. So um, I, I guess I started my training as a neuropharmacologist. So I did a PhD at the Queen's Medical Center at Nottingham University doing neuropharmacology um, and then moved straight away into um, the pharmaceutical industry and the biotech industry, um, both in the US and the UK. So I spent over three decades um, working in the pharmaceutical space. Um, most of my experience is in neuroscience, so that's both psychiatry and neurology. And my experience spans all the way from um, drug discovery, so identifying new targets in the brain against which to develop drugs, all the way through taking those new drugs into healthy volunteers and patients for the first time, and then all the way through to late-stage clinical trials where you scale up the clinical trials to really assess efficacy and safety in much larger patient populations, um, like I said, mostly in, in neuroscience. Um, my role here at Small Pharma, I'm the Chief Medical and Scientific Officer. I've been in Small Pharma now for about a year and a half, and I guess my role really is the uh, accountability for all of the preclinical and clinical um, functions here in Small Pharma. And I should say that whilst I you know, spent a number of dec decades working in psychiatry, um, this is the first time I've really worked in um, psychedelic-assisted therapy. Um, so I'm quite new to this field, but of course you can bring a lot of the learnings from other aspects of psychiatry and other aspects of clinical trials into um, psychedelic-assisted therapy. Now, I do understand that uh, Small Pharma is leading the world's first DMT clinical trials. What is DMT? I mentioned, of course, that it's, it's found in plants and the brains of mammals, but what is DMT basically? Yeah, so it, it stands for N-N-dimethyltryptamine. It has a structure very similar to serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter in the human body and in the human brain. Um, and it is a psychedelic, so, so it elicits a psychedelic experience in people who take DMT. Um, similar to that of other psychedelics, but, but it has a slightly different pro profile in that it elicits a very short psychedelic experience, um, though we still expect this to be therapeutically beneficial. So it, it's a little bit like serotonin. It stimulates a number of the same sites in the brain that serotonin stimulates. And then, like I said, it gives you this, this um, it elicits this psychedelic experience. But, you know, we believe that when it's combined with wraparound therapy, so when you provide preparation therapy beforehand and integration therapy afterwards, that it actually has the potential to be um, a rapid onset and long duration antidepressant that could really get to the root cause of internalizing conditions like depression. Is DMT harvested from mammals, animals, plants, or is it synthetically designed so that it's ingestible by a patient? So for clinical trials, we synthesize it. It's synthesized to good manufacturing good manufacturing quality level so so we are um you know we are synthesizing it to a very quite high quality very high purity it, it can be extracted by the way and that's um how um dmt and ayahuasca is provided but actually not for clinical trials so you really need to synthesize it in a very standardized and like i said high quality way and that's what we're doing for our clinical trials are there several depressive disorders that can be addressed using DMT or is it, are there certain conditions that lend themselves uh, better to DMT? So, so based on um, data that's out there, and there isn't a lot of data on DMT, but there are some academic research trials where they have evaluated the effects of DMT. DMT and, and excitability of the brain and on, you know, increasing connectivity in the brain. So, so I think based on that work and then based on some of the preclinical um, data that is available in the literature, then, then we think that DMT is likely to work across a number of in, uh, what we call internalizing conditions. And internalizing conditions are those conditions where due to overactivity of various networks of the brain, you get this kind of repetitive, negative, cycling, ruminative thought processes that lead to ingrained um, um, 
in, ingrained thought, you know, thought patterns and ingrained neural connections. So, so they include major depressive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, potentially OCD and other anxiety disorders. So, so we think DMT has a potential when combined with therapy to work across a number of those different disorders. But the one that small pharma have selected first to, to show proof of concept is um, patients with major depressive disorder. And that trial, as you say, has now already started. And you expect the results early next year, mid next year? Is that what we're looking forward to? Yes, that, that, that's correct. We we um, we started dosing patients. We have just completed the first component of this study, which was a one, phase one component, which was really all about selecting a safe, tolerable dose of DMT that elicits a psychedelic experience in all high, um, healthy volunteers that, that take it. And we used psychedelic naive healthy volunteers because we think a lot of patients will also be psychedelic naive. In fact, we think the majority of patients will be. And so we wanted to understand the tolerability in that type of population. We found that dose from the phase one component and we have now started dosing in phase 2A. The study is going very well. And yes, we expect high level um, results in the first half of next year. Now, you did say that DMT offers a a short-lived psychedelic experience, but uh, it's a rapid-acting and long-lasting antidepressant uh, as far as its effects are concerned. Is is that correct? So we think it will be. We predict it will be, but, you know, we Mm. are doing the first trial in major depressive disorder, so I guess it it remains to be seen in this trial just how rapidly acting and how long the duration of antidepressant effect is. Is But based on academic research, um, DMT, even though it has a psychedelic experience of just 20 to 25 minutes, elicits the same increase in connectivity and increase in excitation in the brain. And this has been measured using um, fMRI or EEG. It has the same effects in the brain as psilocybin does, for example, which has a psychedelic experience of somewhere between six and eight hours. So, so based on you know the data that we've obtained in these imaging studies, we do think that it will have a rapid onset of activity. And so in our clinical trial, we're measuring antidepressant effect at one week, two weeks, and then we're following up to assess at one month, three months, and six months, really to understand just how long the antidepressant effects, if indeed we get antidepressant effects, just how long those effects will last. But we, we do anticipate that it will be over a period of months rather than weeks. So we do expect a a long duration antidepressant effect. Now, your company was recently granted fast track designation from the UK MHRA Innovation Passport Program. Now, that's comparable to the the FDA Breakthrough Therapy Program here in the United States. Could you talk briefly about what this designation means for your company? Yes, so Small Farm, we're really pleased to get um, IMAP approval, and we are now going through the various different stages of that process. Um, so, so it is akin to fast track. I don't think it's exactly the same. There are some slight differences, but, but basically it helps to, I guess, expedite um, the molecule moving through clinical trial phases to the market. So it expedites, you know, providing this um, drug for patients. But importantly, um, the MHRA are partnering with a number of other bodies and organizations in the UK, like NICE, like the NHS, like British Medical Association. So it, it brings all of these experts together to really help, um, you know, your drug to go through the right development pathway and to expedite it going through that pathway. So I think it will be really important for us to have the input of of, um, all of those different bodies. Psychedelic assisted therapy is still um, quite new in the UK, as I guess it is in the US Mm -hmm. and Europe as well. So it is a a growing area. It's a rapidly growing area. But, but, you know, I think we're all learning as we as we go along. So just how, you know, you will develop these molecules, how we will design the clinical trials as we take these molecules through to market authorization. And then, you know, what the patient experience will be once the drug is on the market. I think we are all starting to understand that more and more. And I think having the input from both the MHRA, but also the MHRA partners is going to be incredibly useful for small pharma. It really will. Well, doctor, if you would give us a website where our listeners can learn much more about small pharma www.smallpharma.com or www.smallpharma.co.uk. Great, great. Well, Doctor, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning, and I'm hoping that we'll um, speak again 
Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Carol Rutledge of Small Pharma. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 